Is it even here yet? Is lunch even here yet? Not yet. All right. Can we all just stop crying for a minute? Just for a moment. Just stop crying. Shree's in the house. You have a word? If you do, let me know. Stop me anytime. He said yes. It's the title of my book that's coming out. I don't know when it's coming out, but he said yes. He said yes. He sent his only begotten son and said yes to us that we could live this righteous life that he wants us to live, this, this life of honoring one another, of loving one another, being kind to one another, being gentle one, to one another. And I, and I asked the Lord this week as I was praying what, he, what the direction of this next month and this next season is, and I really want to walk into this yes season of what yes means in the Word of God and what yes means in your and, I li- your and my lives. Um, and if you haven't read your Bible, I want you to just get to the point where you just dig into it. Dig into it and find out what your yes is. Find out what He has for you. Look at the examples of the yeses in the Bible. We're going to go through this in the next couple of weeks of all the different yeses, this is going to be thrilling. It's going to be exciting. It, you might cry at different times because there's pain in a yes sometimes. Just because we say yes doesn't mean that it doesn't hurt. There's pain in a yes. And I want you to know that, that there's so many yeses in the Bible that we can glean from and grab from. When Abraham said yes, when Moses and Joshua and Ruth and Esther and Elijah and Paul And the disciples said yes to him. What that did. And you and I, the yes that we have. If he calls you to a yes, can he be, can you be trusted with that yes? My question to you this morning is, if he calls you to a yes, it doesn't matter what size the yes is, can he trust you with that yes to fulfill it and walk that yes completely out in your life? August 14th, 2017. Some of you might know, some of you might not know. I was in a car wreck, I died. I had broken bones, fractured skull that was healed at the hospital within four hours. I saw Jesus face to face. I walked in heaven. I saw him. It was a true event. It was a real event. I've later read different books about other people who've had the same encounters that I had in in heaven. And when I got to the end of where we were walking, I knew I was getting ready to step into a point of, that there was no returning back from this point that I was stepping into. I just knew it in, in my spirit. I knew it. And I asked the Lord one question. I said, can I live? And he said, yes. His first yes is always to you. to live that yes, to walk out that yes that he has for you. And when he said those words to me, he said yes. When he showed me the multitude, when I turned to the left and I saw the multitude of people, and I said to him, who are all these people? And he said, these are the ones that would not have made heaven if you would have chose heaven today. At times I ponder upon the yes that I said to him, even the question that I asked him, what would everything be like today if I wouldn't have said that yes to him or if I wouldn't even ask that question to him? Where would we be today? Where would my wife be today if I would have stepped into heaven and not came back? 
obviously the church wouldn't be here. You and I wouldn't be here right now to rejoice with him and glorify his name and magnify him as we did as everyone come up front. And I so appreciate that, how you guys worship today. It was, it was over the top, and I thank you for that. But I believe when he calls us into the yes and we respond to that yes, it's, it's, it's him trusting us with something. Some of your yeses might be big and some of them might be small. And it doesn't matter how big or small they are. It's, what matters is that you answer the call to that yes. That you answer the fullness of the call. And behind that yes, there's going to be many, many more yeses behind that yes that you have to follow through with to fulfill that first yes that he has for you in your life. And as I said, we're going to talk in, in the weeks to come about many different Bible characters, many different scriptures about the yes. It doesn't matter what you go through in life if you will learn to follow the yes and say yes to him. When you're in the streets, when you're in the highways, when you're in byways, when you see someone that needs assistance and, and, and God asks you if you will help them. He's not always going to help ask you to help them because he's got you on a path and he might not want you to veer from that path. So always be mindful of that. But there are times that he wants you specifically to reach out to someone. This past week, I had a truck driver come up into the driveway and he, and he, and he rolled up and dropped off some sod. And I felt the Lord say to me, ask him if he knows me. And I'm pretty bold anyhow, and I, and, and I ask a lot of people on a constant basis, do they know Jesus? And his answer was to me when I asked him, he said, um, I, I kind of do. And I knew that really meant no, that he didn't, that he didn't really know Jesus. He knew of Jesus, but he didn't have a relationship with Jesus. And I said, do you have a relationship with Jesus? He says, really, no, I don't. And man, I got to pray over him. That truck driver left crying, driving his truck away. That's just me answering the call to one little yes that changed someone's life from maybe eternity. I don't know what that little yes that I answered the call to is going to amount to because it could be a, a yes that he says to God that is greater than anything I've ever seen. My yes to God is this, this church, this ministry. What will your yes do? As I said, some of your yeses might be great, might be small. Some of you might be world changers. Your yes might change the world, literally change the world. There's some yeses in here today that are going to change the world. The world. And there's some yeses in here today that's going to change a city. Some are going to change a region. And some are going to change just the life of someone. Walk in every yes that he has for you. He didn't say no to me. He said yes, and he trusts me with that yes. And I'm guarding that yes with everything in my heart. If you know me by now, if you know the depth of me, my yes, my yes is so guarded. Because I want God to have his way with me. I want God to have his complete way with me in anything. I constantly am praying, Lord, if there's anything in me that's not of you, take it out now. I was driving yesterday, I just said, up and out in Jesus' name, whatever it is. If anything in me, up and out now, get out. Go. You got to go. I took authority over myself. Nothing in particular. I just said, if there's anything in me, up and out. I'm just constantly reminding the enemy he has no place in my heart. He has no place in my life. Up and out in Jesus' name. You can do the same thing. You don't have to wait for someone else to pray over you. You can pray over yourself and say, up and out right now in Jesus' name. Kick him out right now. In Elijah 6, 8, it says, Hear the voice of the Lord and saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? 
And then he said, here am I, send me. Where's your posture with that today? If God wanted to send you somewhere or to bring you to a place or tell you to give up everything to follow him, what would you do? What would your answer be to that question? Would you go? Would you give up your time? Would you give up your money? Some of you might say, yes, I'll do that. And then you follow through with a no. We have to follow through with what God says with the yes. And I'm going to tell you from experience from this ministry, this yes has been painful. You might not know all the ins and outs. You might not know everything that Shelly and I have been through. We've been screamed at. We've been hollered at. We've been chewed on. We've been spit out. None of that matters because we said yes. And we'll go through whatever we have to go through to continue to walk that yes out. It doesn't matter what people do. You know, when, when Randy, when you said that this morning, I thought maybe there was going to be a line of people come up to me and, um, <laughs> and want me to forgive them for whatever I've said. I don't, I don't know. But um, I, I just feel like there's going to be a line. I'm like, where are they all at? You know, because I thought, man, I know people have been offended at me. I know they have. They walked away because of it. They walked away from a yes, from a call. And it hurts my heart. But I'm pressing on, I'm pressing into the yes that he has. I want to look at a particular yes in the Bible. I want to look at Mary. If you have your Bibles, turn to Luke chapter 1, verse 26 through 38. We're going to read this and talk about it a little bit. And then, as I said, the weeks to come, we're going to talk about these other, other characters in the Bible and how their yes changed things, how their yes meant so much to God and how he trusted them with that yes. Luke 1, verse 26. It says, now in the sixth month, the angel of Gabriel was sent to God in the city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man who was named Joseph, a descendant of David. There's so much history in that. And the virgin's name was Mary. And coming in, he said to her, greetings, favored one. Wouldn't you love to hear those words from the Lord? Greetings, favored one. I know I do. The Lord is with you. But she was very perplexed at this statement and kept pondering. Listen, she kept pondering what kind of salutation this was. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for, I, for God has found favor with you. I want God to find favor in me, in my life. And I believe that he has because he trusted me with this yes. He's trusted me with a multitude of people that he showed me in heaven. Trusted me with a multitude of people that he showed me in heaven. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son and you shall name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. Can you imagine? Can you imagine an angel coming to you and telling you this story about what is getting ready to happen, that you're a virgin woman and getting ready to conceive a baby, and that what his name is, and the Son of the Most High, the Lord will give him a throne, of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom will not have no end. I mean, I, I couldn't imagine what was going through Mary's mind when all these things were being spoken to her. And she said to the angel, how can this be since I am a virgin? And the angel answered and said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. 
He has come upon me. We've birthed this thing. This Life of Love Ministry Center has been a birthing of something that God's doing. He said, he will come upon you, and I just received this to myself, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. And for that reason, the Holy Child shall be called the Son of God. And behold, even your relative Elizabeth has also conceived a son in her old age. This is John the Baptist that he's talking about. And she who was called barren is now in her sixth month. For nothing will be impossible with God. I wish we remember that. Nothing will be impossible with God. And Mary said, this is the key word I want you to hear. Behold, the bond slave of the Lord, may it be done to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. Let's pray. Father, we just love you this morning. We glorify your name, Lord. Let us answer the call to your yes, Lord. Let us say these very words that Mary said. May it be done to me according to your word. May my yes be your yes. May my yes be walked out fully and completely. God, we love you so much. We love you so much. We say yes to you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. On the count of three, can we say yes? One, two, three, yes. Yes, hallelujah. So listen, Mary, Mary was like, you know, this virgin girl, and, and um, she's getting ready to have the Savior of the world. It's awesome. I mean, it's an awesome position to be in for her. Scary as well. But there were so many yeses that followed this yes, the same as they're going to be for yours. When she, when she was a young girl, she had to make these choices. She walked carrying this baby clear across the country to go have a baby in a manger. So many yeses behind the yes that Mary said. What would have happened, you think, if she would have known the full story? If she would have known that the child that she was going to have was going to be hung on a cross, was going to be beaten, was going to be killed. What would have happened? What do you think would happen that, that her son was going to finally be killed but yet rose from the dead? If she would have known the full story and the same with us, if we know the full story we might not have said yes. I might not have said yes had I known some of the things that were going to happen to me. But I said yes. And God helped me say yes again and again and again and again through all the things that I've been through. Some have been great. Some have been bad. But it's all good in the end because it's for him. And it's the yes that I'm after. The yes that he's called me to. He knew he could trust Mary with a yes. That's why he asked her. And if he asks you to do something, and you say yes, it means he can trust you with that yes. He wants to trust you with the yes. He has a yes for every one of us. Because he said yes, he has a yes for you and I to answer the call of So my question to you this morning, how are you living your life? Is God able to present something to you that will come in the form of you answering yes? Is your life in a spot, in a situation, in a in a in a way, lived in a way that He can trust you with something big? Or even something small? Are you living your life in a way that God can say, listen, I need you to say yes to this. I'm going to give this to you. I'm going to hand it to you. And man, it's going to be amazing. You know what I mean, Uve, don't you?
He has something waiting for you. You said yes a long time ago and you waited. God's answered that call. Aren't you grateful for him? So can he trust you with a yes this morning? I know this is simple, to the point. It's just how I roll. Even if it costs you everything. Even if it costs you everything. Even if he gave you a glimpse of what's going to happen, would you still say yes this morning? Shelly and I said yes. The Life of Love Ministry Center, I said no three times before I said yes. Three times I said no. I don't want to go to that city. I had nothing. I wanted nothing to do with this city. Not one thing. This is the, matter of fact, this was the last place in the world I wanted to be. Shelly will tell you that. This is the last place I wanted to be. But when I already told him yes before, I just didn't know it was Martinsville. I followed through with it, and I said, I'll, I'll go ahead and do it since you already made me say yes on this because I knew he could trust me with it. And, um, and so if you guys feel like at times that I'm, I'm pushy or at times that I'm controlling or at times I'm whatever you might think about me, just know that I'm trying to guard the yes that he's called me to. I come straight out of bounty hunting in the full-time pastoring. So I'm learning as I go. And it's okay. He's here. I must be doing something right. Let's stand. I don't want to drag this out. So remember, we're going to learn coming up. We're going to learn about, start reading into these characters. Abraham, Moses, Joshua, Ruth, Esther, Elijah, Paul, disciples. Even look into the little man that, that, or woman that said uh, yes to Jesus riding in on a donkey. And they went and they got the donkey that was tied up. That man said yes too. I mean, Jesus might have had to come walking in on his two feet. Had that guy not said yes and gave him the donkey to ride on. I mean, that guy said yes. It might have been a little yes, but it meant so much to God. Because it fulfilled, like Randy said, it was part of the puzzle. Or like David said, it was part of the puzzle that God has. Putting those pieces together. Man, Randy, it was heavy today, wasn't it? A little bit. You set the atmosphere. <laughs> I just want to jump up and down. Yeah. So, I love it, man. I love, I love what God's doing. You know, just press in to the yes. Press into what he's called you to do. You know, life's going to throw a lot of things at you. It really is. Really is. I found out this morning, it's kind of interesting that the Lord put it on my heart to ask my sister if I've ever um, had, you know, um, if my mom ever lost a child. and Because I, 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 didn't, I didn't think she had. And I um, uh, found out this morning when I was five years old that she did lose a child. Didn't know it till this morning. I was a little bit emotional this morning thinking about that. My cousin just shot himself past last week. I went to a funeral yesterday. Um, a few months back, my other cousin killed himself. A few months back, his dad had died. And a few months before that, his other brother died. And I'm sitting at the funeral. I'm thinking, man, they're just dropping off like flies. And, and I'm talking to this individual out in the parking lot, and he's bragging about the Abneys and about the Abney name and about how how bad they are or whatever they want to call it, you know, a um, bunch of bikers, and, and, uh, and they're all sitting there drinking, and they're drinking at the funeral. And he said, I don't know any Abney. Don't get drunk. I'm just listening to him, and, you know, and uh, finally I just stepped in. I said, well, you met one now. But I used to get drunk. But I don't know more. I get drunk on the Holy Spirit. But what a testimony. What a testimony to say to him is like, you met one now. 
you have Matt and Abney that don't get drunk. And I'm a preacher too. And man, you should have seen his accountants change. It changed all over the place. But I'm grateful that I'm changed. I'm saved. I'm on my way to heaven. But before I get there, I got so much to do here. And so do you. It ain't over. It's just beginning. This, this story is just beginning. It's just beginning to be written. We're at the exciting times of the beginning of this story. We are at some exciting times right now, so I'm grateful for that. We're going to have, a, um, we'll have an altar call, but Sheree, I want you to come up here. This is my friend Sheree. Come all the way up. Yeah. Pastor, um, earlier, we had, didn't have plans to come here today. We initially did, and then... It was changed in our because our granddaughter was competing in a in a tournament, and um, so we thought we'd come afterwards. And so we're privileged to be here for a few minutes. Pastor honored me and asked me if I had a word from the Lord. And initially, I thought no, but this morning I read in Scripture, and I think it applies. And I want to just release it because of even just the memorial of this being five-year anniversary and what God is saying and the portion of the message. Pastor, thank you. Well, the word of the Lord is yes. Will you say yes? And reminded me of even the, I had a conference a few years ago, which was let it be unto me according to thy word when he visits you. And he had visited, visited you and made a visitation and you said yes. And so I was reading in the scriptures this this morning before we even left and the scripture verse is in Ephesians, and it says, Walk worthy of the calling with which you are called. And as it bears witness with just what Pastor was saying this morning, if you're in the house, you have a call. If you're in the house, God is saying, What is your answer to the calling? What are you going to say? by my spirit that is visiting you even now. Even the weight of his presence is in the house. I'm, I feel myself trembling even I, as I felt the bubbling up of the word of the Lord. What is your answer going to be when a question is put out? What will you do for me? Will you walk with me? Will you, will you wait before me? Will you answer the call? And he says, walk worthy of the call. And then in Ephesians 1, 5, it says, therefore, because you say yes, he said, therefore, be imitators of God. Be imitators of God. Do like Jesus did. Many, many years ago, there's a game when we were children we used to play called Duck, Duck, Goose. You might remember that and how you waited with anticipation for the person to come up behind you. And I was have, in this dream I was having and I saw the Lord. And I was, he was going from person to person to person to person. I was just sitting there waiting for my turn, and I was the last one. And he came up, and he put his hand upon me, and he said, go and do likewise. Go and do what I do, he says. Go and do what I do. Reach out, talk, encourage, bless. Do what I do. Leave the signs and the wonders to me, but do what I do. Do what I'm calling you to do. Verse 2, it says, and walk in love. Life of love. What a privilege to come alongside. God is calling us. Will you walk that walk of love? Will you reach out and extend your hand in Christian fellowship? Will you prefer others instead of walking after selfishness and self-indulgence? And these are the same questions that God asks me. And if we are going to be identified with Jesus, we're going to be identified with what he did. We're going to pay a price. There will be times that we will experience things that is not pleasant and not kind. But didn't he walk in love? Yes, he did. All the way to the cross. So that is, that is what I felt like he gave me. Come alongside. Come alongside. Do what Jesus did and walk in love. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. All right. I stopped crying. <laughs> Let's get joyful. We're getting ready to have fellowship one with another. And uh, it's going to be good. 
I'm going to, I'm going to, um, is there anybody here that's not saved? If you are, if you're not saved, come up front. Let's just do it now. Let's get it over with. And that way you can live the rest of your life joyful, peaceful. You might be beat up a little bit, but it's all right. We'll be here for you to help you. Is there anybody that's not saved? Okay. I'm going to ask one more time. Is there anybody here that's not saved, that really don't know Jesus as their Lord and Savior? If you don't, just come up, please. Don't. Yeah. Yeah. Stay right there. Stay right there. Is there anybody else? Is there anybody else? Listen, this is life or death. Anybody else? Young or small, listen. When I was eight years old, I gave my life to Christ. Come on. I want you to know the angels are going to rejoice right now. They are rejoicing already. They're rejoicing right now. Listen, guys, there's no specific prayer. The Bible says to pray at all. What he does say is to confess in your heart, and I want you guys, as I'm talking, just to close your eyes, to confess in your heart that Jesus is Lord. Ask him to forgive you of your sins and to cleanse you of your sins. All unrighteousness. Knowing that from this point forward that your lives will be his. When he sets that call before you, when he sets that call before you to say yes, you'll say yes and you'll walk it all the way out. From this point forward, all your sins are gone. They're washed white as snow. Never to be remembered against you again. Never. Never. He loves you so much that he sent his son that he could live inside of you. The Holy Spirit could live inside of you and give you direction in life. Father, we thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness this morning. How precious. Thank you, God, for your sons and daughters this morning. This church, these people, we're honored to serve you because Jesus served. That's what he came to do is serve. That's what we're here to do is serve one another. Not get envious. As Randy said, not build fences. Freely love one another. Father, we thank you again. Listen, right now, this moment, I want you to know the angels in heaven are rejoicing, they're jumping up and down, and so are we right now. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Father. It is a finished work. It's a finished work. It's a finished work. Now walk it out. Walk it out, young man. Walk it out. He has you. Man, he's got a call for your life, man. Don't ever be afraid to step up and say, I'm, I'm the one. I'll go. Send me. Don't ever be afraid. You don't ever be afraid to say, I'll go. Send me. Everything else in the world can be put aside, but him first. Center up on him. Make him the center of your life. Then the rest of it will all come into play. It has to. 
It has to if you make him sinner. Yeah. He's favoring you three this morning. Thank you for being faithful to come up and pray. Yeah. Let's again, let's rejoice. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Yeah. All right, let's pray for the food. I can smell it. I think I can smell something. It's almost here. Well, we can fellowship till it gets here. Father, we just thank you, Lord, for this food we're about to receive. Lord, we thank you for the salvation of this morning. We thank you for your goodness, your mercy, and your grace, Lord. God, I praise you right now. We seal, we seal it right now with Holy Spirit, these salvations. Father, we say that put a hedge of protection around these men and women this morning. God, you put a hedge of protection around these families, Lord. The enemy cannot come in and steal, kill, and destroy anything that's been done this morning. And God, you have sealed these men this morning. And you have a call for their life. You have a rhema word for them. Let them walk it out this morning. Continue to walk it out and be the men that you've called them to be. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Now I pray for the food. Let it be nourishing to our bodies. In Jesus' name, amen.